On One Photo Raw 2024 has been out for a little while now. I've been having a lot of fun playing with it and making videos about some of the different features. And if you want to see videos that are specific to this new version, my playlist is there. I will, of course, keep adding to it. This video is kind of a beginner's guide, kind of a getting started guide to develop. And you might think, develop, oh, let me do a couple of things. Let me hit a couple of buttons, then move into local adjustments or effects. And while that can work, there's a lot in develop, and I really think it deserves a lot of attention when you're editing. There's five key sections. All of them can potentially have a huge impact on your final result. I'm going to dive into those uh, in this video, but I want to point out that each of these five sections has so much in it, I could probably make a video about each section. So just to be clear, I can't cover everything, but this should give you plenty of information to get started on your editing journey in on one starting and develop. Let's get into it. Now this photo I've already cropped and I've already taken some spots out, but other than that, no edits. Now I'm on develop, right, which is right here. And there's five sections, as I said, brilliance AI, you got tone and color, noise and sharpening, lens correction, and transform. All vitally important. I think a lot of people are going to come in and click brilliance AI and just get started. And while I understand the desire to do that, I actually typically will start kind of at the bottom and work my way up, which is what I'm going to do in this video. So transform, you can just click the radio button to activate it and click the word to kind of open the menu. And there's a lot here, but as you can see, it's all about fixing things like vertical lines. You can slightly recompose your photo on the horizontal or the vertical axis. You can adjust the aspect ratio. You can straighten it. There's a whole lot here. Uh, but one of the key things for me is keystoning or fixing the uh, keystone, which is if you got a wide angle lens and you're shooting kind of close to like a building, it's going to look like it's uh, leaning back. You can straighten those vertical lines and make that uh, look a lot better. So transform, vitally important. It's not sexy, but it's useful, and it's, I think, incredibly important. Jumping up to the next one, lens correction. There's a whole lot here, and I love this section simply because it does uh, something that I think is really important, and that is it's going to automatically identify your camera and your lens and then adjust distortion accordingly. So as you can see, my distortion has been adjusted from the base photo to that, and that's because it automatically identified that I shot this with my Sony camera, and the Sony lens was the 24-70 f2.8 GM2. If for some reason it picks the wrong lens, you can click that, and you can see the menu is incredibly extensive. I mean, there's so much here. It's, it's kind of mind-boggling, to be honest, that it recognizes so many different lenses. If you need to make an adjustment, you can do so. And for some reason, if it picked the wrong manufacturer, look at that list. I mean, again, there's just a lot here, but it will automatically apply that lens profile, fix the distortion, and if for some reason you want to come in, you can adjust a distortion further by refining it with this slider. I don't need to do that here, but I wanted to point that out that you have a little bit more control if you want to, and I think that's a useful section. Uh, and if you look at the before and after, um, I love that. So I'm going to leave that activated, jump into noise and sharpening. Now, Noise and sharpening has been here a while. It was last year, I believe, when they came out with No Noise AI and Tax Sharp AI, which basically, as the name implies, use AI algorithms to go in and remove noise, especially from higher ISO images, and fix deblurring. So you might have an image like this that you shot on a tripod and not even know that it's slightly not super crisp, and this Tax Sharp AI will actually fix that. Or you can go in and click on both, and it'll do both at the same time. Now, that does take a minute, and you will notice down here there's a progress menu in the bottom right corner, but it's going to go in and adjust this photo, removing noise, and ensuring that it's tack sharp, and you're going to see that result here in a minute. There it is, and that is a lot crisper. If you look at those mountains before and after in the trees, it's just a massive, massive difference, and I shot this on a tripod. So you might think, oh, I'd only use tack sharp for a handheld photo. Not necessarily. Now, it's a little too much for me, so you can adjust that, pulling back this micro sharpening slider or maybe the, the de-blur overall and kind of reduce the intensity of the effect. And of course, you can do the same for the no noise uh, noise reduction if you want to. Uh, once you're ready or happy with that, you just click apply to apply that to your photo and you're all set. And anytime you move these sliders, you will notice that the progress bar down below comes in and it readjusts. Now, I'm actually just going to reset that to zero and go back out and just skip that section. But I wanted to point out because, again, useful. It's a huge, important utility. It may not necessarily be as fancy as like making some color shifts, but transform, lens correction, noise and sharpening, incredibly important, and things that I like to do in the beginning of my workflow. 
Now that leads me into the two sections that you're probably most interested in, and honestly, you're probably gonna spend the most time in, Tone and Color and Brilliance AI. Now Tone and Color is incredibly powerful, and there's a lot here, as you can see, all these different sections. You're probably gonna start with Brilliance AI, and I actually recommend that you start with Brilliance AI, but I wanna talk about Tone and Color first, because I think if you wanna learn how to really control your image, and that's controlling light and detail and color and all that, I think learning how all these different sliders work and the impact that they have on your photo, I think is incredibly useful to give you a better education about how to adjust your photos. Then use Brilliance AI, let it take advantage uh, of the AI power that it has to identify specific elements and make adjustments, but then you can come in and further refine. I just think it's a really important to understand how tone and color works. I'm gonna spend a couple of minutes here before we get into Brilliance AI, but my editing is reversed, Brilliance AI and then tone and color, hope that makes sense. Now the first thing is camera profiles, and these essentially are alternative interpretations of the raw data, and as a result, you're gonna get a slightly different look, and I like to audition these, which is basically hovering over them and seeing what comes up, and there's a bunch here for my camera as well, which I love. I like that camera light, I think that looks pretty good. I can click on that, and you can see my photo is already much better. There it is before, and there it is now, and I haven't done anything other than lens correction and a profile adjustment for my camera. So powerful stuff. And then you've got all these other sections, tone, structure, color, right? Uh, not to mention purity. So uh, these sliders, I think, are all pretty state straightforward. Uh, they're powerful, and I recommend you uh, play with them. But I want to point out that this tone and color section, uh, these are global adjustments, meaning it's going to impact your entire photo. So everything that you do here is going to impact everything across the entire photo. So if I lift exposure, every pixel, every bit of the photo is going to get brighter. Uh, if I adjust highlights, it's going to fix the highlights across the entire photo versus maybe just fixing them or adjusting them in a certain part of the photo. And so the reason I bring that up is because uh, though I'm a fan of adjusting tone and color and doing all those kind of things at the beginning of your edit, I don't do everything that I wanna to do to the photo, and I don't expect to do everything I wanna to do to the photo here, simply because it's global in nature. And what I might wanna do is come in and do some specific refinements with masking to target specific areas. So, in other words, I think of these as kind of your getting started adjustments. These are not your final adjustments. So, I just like to point that out. Uh, one of the key things I love here is having this mid-tone slider, because if you lift the mid-tones in an image, you'll often see a huge, huge impact across the photo. And a lot of uh, editors don't have a mid-tone slider, but I love that On One does because I use it all the time. It's really powerful. Because if I were to come in here and just lift the shadows, for example, uh, a lot of things are gonna get brighter, but I start losing contrast because in adjusting the shadows, I'm losing the darkness on these green trees. But in lifting the mid-tones, which I was doing, I can come in and I'm still gonna maintain some of that contrast because it's not lifting uh, the darker parts. It's not lifting the shadows. So the ability to have that one little slider, it's a big deal to me. I love it, I use it all the time. Now I won't do a complete edit here because that would involve a number of things, including local adjustments and effects, but I wanna point out that it's important that you spend time on, on these different sliders and go through and see how they impact your photo and just get a feel for things. Uh, the structure and haze, vitally important as well. Structure is gonna add a little bit of crunch, a little bit of detail, and you can see it's kind of crisping up that look. But again, it's global. I tend not to use that one very much, if at all, simply because it impacts the entire photo. Now, if I have a particularly hazy photo, I may come in here and play with the haze slider because that will add or remove haze. So if I go to the right, you see it's getting a little bit hazier, but if I go to the left, it starts cutting through that, and it really makes that sky kind of stand out going that negative of course is overdone but you know here i am negative 20 negative 30 looks pretty good in that sky and it's kind of cutting through some of that haze for me which i like now the color section or white balance is to me an incredibly powerful one and it's something that i adjust on every single photo really without fail it doesn't matter what i got in camera but i always come in and play with the temperature and tint simply because I like to. Um, it's a personal preference, but for something like this, if you wanted to go a little warmer, of course, you can just drag that to the right and you get that warmth coming across the entire photo. I I'm honestly a fan of making things a little bit cooler, and I like to drag my tint slightly to the right. It's just a personal preference, uh, but you know, I tend to make these adjustments 
Now, there's a lot you can do in white balance, and I don't know if you noticed, but as soon as I start moving these sliders, it changed here from as shot to custom. Uh, and so it will adjust accordingly. And you can also change it from degrees Kelvin to just a, a regular number by clicking on where it clicks on uh, that K. Uh, you can also have the eyedropper to come in and sample specific areas that you want to target as kind of a neutral color to adjust white balance based on that. There's a lot you can do there, and there's definitely ways to come in and customize uh, the overall look of your image using these white balance settings. Uh, saturation and vibrance are here. I tend to go really low on these. I'll generally skip saturation and I might use a little bit of vibrance like a 5 or 10. Uh, the difference being saturation is going to get every color and make them kind of get more intense whereas vibrance is going to just pick kind of the non-dominant colors and so I like to do that and I typically prefer to do more of my color work either in local or effects and we'll get into that in future videos and then purity just maintains the purity of the highlights or the shadows so if I did come in and just drag saturation I don't recommend going to 100, but this is a good visual example. Uh, but I want to maintain the purity of the highlights. It'll take that saturation and that color cast out of the highlights, which is really the top of the mountains, top of, um, of the sky, that sort of thing. So you can kind of see how that's impacting uh, and vice versa for shadows. So if I drag the purity slider on shadows, it's taking all that sh uh, saturation intensity that I added out of the shadows. And so that's what those do. The point is, all these things work really well together to give you a ton of fine grain control over your image. But of course, the, the Shining Star and the new fun, exciting toy in the toolbox in Develop is Brilliance AI. So I've reset color. There's nothing there. I'm going to go ahead and hit Brilliance AI. Turn that on and you're going to see a massive, massive difference in the photo. And in fact, you might think it's too much of a difference and that's okay. You've got an amount slider that defaults to 100. Uh, but you can drag that left or right to increase or decrease the amount. And you've also got tone and color that you can increase or decrease. And it's defaulting to 100 here, but you can pull these down if it's too much. You can adjust amount. You can do all kind of things to just basically get the photo looking the way you want it to look. Maybe you liked the overall tones, but not the color. You can pull the color down. Now there's a section down here called options and I want to point something out and that is this color slider uh, white balance has to be set to auto if it's on as shot which it was on as shot when I was playing in tone and color a minute ago with the white balance but if white balance is not set to auto you won't have this color slider if it goes over here to as shot you're going to see this color slider is turned off and deactivated so just keep that in mind you've got to be on auto white balance in order to have a uh, the ability to adjust this color slider here in Brilliance AI. Now let me reset those. It's going to go back to 100. If 100 is too much and you want to adjust that, you can do that in Preferences. Just go to this top left menu, click on Preferences, and go to the tab that says Brilliance AI. Uh, this is where you can also set Auto as your default, which I have done. But here's the amount. I could just take that down to 50, let's say. And if I hit OK, it's defaulted to 50 now. If I just reset my slider, you'll see it's now defaulting to 50 for the amount. So just keep that in mind. If you're finding 100 is a little too much, make it 50. And guess what? At 50, looks pretty amazing. That's pretty close to what I would be doing with my own edits anyway. So that's an incredibly powerful and useful tool. And all I did really was just click one button, which was just turn on the radio button for Brilliance AI, get a great starting point, fine tune if necessary or if desired. Now, speaking of fine tuning, the cool thing about Brilliance AI, one of the many cool things, of course, is that it also automatically identifies some of the regions of your photo and creates local adjustments with a mask for those regions with an adjustment that you can go in and further refine. So the regions, floor and sky, are automatically identified. You can also do this drop down, and this is using their Super Select AI technology, which is basically automatic masking, and it finds other elements as I hover over them. And so let's say I add mountain, I just click on that radio button and click apply, and it will add mountain right there, and there it is. And now I've got a local adjustment with the mask built for the mountain. Now, if I want to refine those, you can see as I hover over flora or mountain or sky, there's a little arrow. So let's go click on, we'll just click on sky. That'll be easy. If I click on sky, you'll notice I just now jumped over to the local tab. And if I close this open box, you can see I've got three different adjustments. These were automatically created by Brilliance AI, mountain, sky, and flora. So if I want to further refine anything that's happening in the sky, 
click on that one, open it up, and I can come in here and say, all right, well, maybe I don't want a negative one exposure. Maybe I want it slightly brighter. Maybe I want the midtones a little bit brighter. Maybe I want the highlights a little further down. Bottom line is you can come in and customize it to your heart's content, uh, and that's a local adjustment with the mask, which by definition is what a local adjustment is, but it essentially replicates all the different tools that are over here and develop. So you've got tone, you've got structure, and you've got color. You've got all this power at your fingertips just by clicking on a button here for Brilliance AI, which is why I said this is kind of the shining star, the newfangled, the fun thing that's built in, uh, not just to develop raw, but specifically here, uh, excuse me, not just photo raw, but specifically here on the develop tab. It's incredibly powerful and incredibly useful. And I want to point out one more thing. I've got Brilliance AI turned on. You may remember before I did that, I reset tone and color to zero. But I want to point out now I'm going to open tone and color and you're going to see all these adjustments have been made. So your Brilliance AI is going in and making adjustments here in tone and color based on whatever Brilliance AI is figuring out and the slider adjustments that you make there. That's why, it's one of the reasons, uh, but that's a key reason why I mentioned earlier I think it's important to spend a lot of time in tone and color learning how all this works because all these things kind of go together. You've got five different powerful sections here, transforming to fix vertical, straighten your photo, adjust the aspect ratio, lens correction to fix distortion, noise and sharpening to de-blur, get rid of any grainy noise that you may have, tone and color for all the lighting adjustments and color and, and white balance adjustments. And then Brilliance AI to automatically apply some really powerful edits to your photo and automatically create local adjustment masks for you so that you can take a photo with essentially one click and go from that to that and really make a lot of progress. Now for me, it's not a finished photo. I would still go into local, make some further refinements. I would also go into effects, maybe do some kind of color adjustments or color grades. But... I've come a really long way and really what I did, it's two radio buttons, lens correction and brilliance AI and bam, I've got a massively adjusted photo. And that's what's so powerful and fun about this new version is that they're using AI to really help you get things done more quickly and powerfully. And uh, adding those local adjustment masks here in brilliance AI, I think is brilliant. So I love that. So hopefully that gives you a good idea of how all these things work together, but spend time on tone and color uh, or click on Brilliance AI, feel free to start there. That's where I start, but then come in and you can further refine this. So maybe you decide uh, that negative four contrast, maybe you want a little bit more contrast. We'll see how that's impacting the photo. Maybe I want to slightly brighten those shadows, maybe a little bit of midtones, maybe put on the highlights a little bit more. You can kind of see what's happening to the photo as I'm making these adjustments in tone and color. But Brilliant AI, wonderful starting point, get you going in the right direction. Tone and color can help you dial in more specifically the look you're going for, but also just don't forget about these other sections. They all work together. They're incredibly powerful. It's useful to spend a lot of time here, and I think the more time you spend on the Develop tab, the less time you have to spend on local and effects because you're getting your base canvas and your base edit ready to go, and then you just kind of essentially have what I call touch-up edits to go. Anyway, that's how I'm using Develop, and I hope it gives you a good idea of the power and control that it gives you, and I hope that you spend some time uh, playing around with it because there's a lot there to play with, and it's a lot of fun, and of course, it's very powerful. I'll be back with more on one videos. Hope this gives you a good idea about how to use this and to really make a lot of progress on your photo edits with it. Thanks for watching. I'll be back soon. Comments, questions, feedback, leave that down below, please, and I'll see you in the next video, my friends. You guys take care, and until next time, adios.